So in the last session at the Field Your Audience on social media, we looked at how to get more engagement on your social media posts. In this session, we're going to focus on how to make sales on social media. So how to create posts, how to put things out there. They're going to help you to sell your products and services without you feeling all spammy and scammy and selly. So here's what we're going to cover. So number one, understanding your customer journey and why that's really important. Number two, the three types of content you should be creating to attract your ideal clients. And number three, understanding why people buy and why that's so, so important when it comes to social selling. So first off then, understanding your customer journey and why you need to. So I want you to take a look at this t-shirt that I'm wearing. If you follow me on social media, you might have seen me wearing this t-shirt in various videos and you might have seen me wearing this t-shirt in other colours. It's made by a brand called Mama Life London. I actually have this t-shirt in about, I think it might be about six different designs now and I also have one of their hoodies as well. Now the creator of Mama Life London is actually one of my clients, so it's Beth Campania, she's the founder of Mummy Life London. And I wanted to share with you the journey that Beth took me on from me not owning any of her t-shirts to owning about six of her t-shirts and a hoodie. So I just want to take you through that journey and it all starts with this one video. And this is going to be really important for you to understand how you can sell on social media. So it all started here. I saw a tweet that Beth had put out there about a video that she'd made about how to wear sequin skirts. And I had a sequin skirt hanging up in my wardrobe that I'd had for a few years and I'd never worn it. So her video was exactly about the thing that I was struggling with. I had an item of clothing that I hadn't worn because I just had no ideas what to do with it. So... I went across and I watched Beth's video. I'm just going to show you the opening of it. You can go and watch the full thing if you like, but just going to show you the opening so you can get a sense of this video. Hi everybody, it's Beth from Mama Life London and this is... This is Beth from Life London. It's Beth from Mama Life London and today we are going to be talking about sequins and sparkles. Yes, it is the season to get sparkling. So... By the end of this video, if you're not sure how to wear sequins, we'll give you some outfit ideas and show you how you can either dress it up or dress it down, whatever style suits you best. So, let's get on with the video. As you may have noticed, I am typically never off duty today. Isabella, my daughter, is in the house. Her brother is at school, so I am going to be styling some of these outfits with a never off duty t-shirt. And I actually think if you are a mum and you're going out for a school mum night out, a nursery mum night out, or if you're even taking the babies with you and going on a Christmas meal, which I did when my two were babies, then I mean, what is a better top to wear on your Christmas meal than this one? I think it sums up. Let me just show you how you can spruce this up, a bit of high and low, as my friend Sophie from My Stylish Friend tells me. Dress it up a bit of high and low, and I'm going to show you how to do that now. So the shops are absolutely brimming with sequins and sparkles and metallics at the moment. It's that time of year. So if you're not confident with wearing a short little mini sequin item. Obviously there are lots of knee length skirts out there as well. Winter is a perfect time to get away with wearing a little short skirt because you can layer it with thick tights. To add some layers to this, now it depends if you want to go a bit um, more sophisticated or a bit more rock chicken. Okay, so I'm going to leave you to watch the end of that video yourself, but hopefully you give that gives you the idea. So what Beth's doing in that video, in this content, is she's educating me. She's not trying to sell me her products. She's educating me about how to wear her clothes or, or clothes like hers. I don't have to buy her t-shirt, but I now understand what kind of t-shirt I could wear with a sequin skirt and how to put those two items together. So she is educating me. She's not just making me aware of her own products and services, but she's very cleverly managing to, to get her product in there. But she's just educating me generally. She's helping me to become 
more thoughtful about what I wear. She's giving me ideas and she's basically solving a problem for me. So this is how that relationship started. And from there, I really started to follow Beth's content much more closely. So this is her Instagram feed. And on her Instagram feed, she's always showing different ways that you can wear her t-shirts and her products. Uh, she's not just talking about them or trying to sell them, but she's, she's giving you tips and she's giving you ideas. So, so she's just constantly reminding you about these fab t-shirts that she's got and this fab clothing that she's got. Here's another piece of content that she created which is all about raising awareness. So in this one she's showing how to wear a red jacket and she's basically saying you know, which jacket, which t-shirt do you think goes best with this red jacket and you can see here there's 32 comments, lots of engagement, she's getting people involved in the conversation you know which t-shirt do you like this red jacket with the best and this is what this stuff is really about it's about creating conversations around your products and services it's not just about trying to sell your stuff all the time so this is this is what we call awareness content and this part of that customer journey is when you're making people aware not just of your products and services um, but it could be other products and services that are just like yours. What you're doing is you're just being a helpful person, you're asking questions, you're starting conversations, you're just raising awareness of what it is that you do and the problems that you solve for your customers. So here's a little snip from what a little snippet I should say from one of Beth's uh, Instagram stories. So if you're not familiar with Instagram stories, it's a, a much more kind of rough and ready version of Instagram and you can share basically your stories about what you're up to day to day and Beth uses stories really well um, to show off her products and she's always talking about them starting conversations about her products so here's a little bit of a, um, a, a peek as to how Beth does this. So here she's showing a uh, t-shirt with different things she's got a poll here is it t-shirt weather yet she's got other people wearing her products as well there's her messing about in a in a shop shop window um, sort of more of a fun piece. Here's somebody else wearing one of her t-shirts that she's added in there. She's showing how to wear her t-shirt here with different types of skirts, with pleated skirts. She's also uh, bringing in other brands as well. So she's constantly solving problems. I'm probably her ideal customer because I love clothes, but I also don't see myself as a particularly creative person. So I'm always looking for ideas on how I can put clothes together. I feel like that doesn't come naturally to me. So Beth is solving my problem, but she's also making me want to buy her stuff, which is really, really clever. So this is her awareness content. So that is the first stage of your journey with any customer or client. You're building awareness of the kind of problems that you solve. You're answering people's questions. You're being a helpful person. And you may well also be bringing your products and services in at that stage, but only if it's relevant. You're not trying to shove your products or services down people's throat. So the next stage is for when you've got people who are interested in your products and services, but they haven't quite for want of a better way of putting putting it, you haven't moved them over the fence yet. They're still kind of on the fence. You haven't moved them over the line. And this is when you might want to create content where you're, you're ask, answering people's questions. So, you know, if, if you sell a product or service, you've probably got questions that come up all the time that people ask you, like, you know, uh, can I wear a white t-shirt with this type of trousers or you know, what kind of cotton is it made of? Um, how, do, how well does it wash? All those kind of questions that people are asking you about your product or service, you can actually turn this into content. And you can even do it on a very simple level as Beth does here by just asking which is your favourite, uh, black or or grey. I know one of the challenges that I had when I first bought one of Beth's t-shirts, I didn't know which colour to buy it on. Really, really nice colours. wasn't really sure. So this is sort of, sort of consideration content. This is kind of aimed at those people who have already spotted her, her products, were already kind of interested, but a little bit on the fence and can't decide. And here she's got a, a kind of um, revolving carousel of different photos. It's a good, good piece of content. Then we move on to the next stage. So once you've raised awareness of your product or service and the kind of problems that you solve for your customers or clients, then you've moved through that phase where you're answering their questions and you know you're helping to move people over the line. So people who might be interested but haven't made a buying decision yet, then you've got your purchase content. So this is when you are just directly 
asking for the sale. So here's an example of one of Beth's posts. Hey mamas, I'm doing 10% off today while I'm at this morning live. Would you like the code? Uh, there's no question that what she's doing here is selling. She's giving you the code and she's asking you to buy. And th those kind of posts are, are absolutely fine to do. Um, here's another example I actually bought from this particular post. Guess who's back, back, back. I'm ecstatic to say that these beautiful white t-shirts are back in stock in all sizes. They've got leopard print across them and I think the last time I tried to buy one um, they were out of stock um, so she's not beating about the bush she's basically saying here's the product to buy here's the link go off and buy it so you can see there that Beth took me through through a customer journey so I've been through a customer journey with Beth so the first stage was about raising awareness and she did that through her content by being a helpful person by helping me solve my fashion problems then there was a little bit of consideration content I reckon Beth could probably do lo loads more of this um, but the, the type of content that's aimed at people who are thinking about buying your products or services but they haven't quite decided yet this is the kind of content that helps to move people over the line and I will give you more examples of this as we go and then there is is straight off purchase content when you're just asking people to buy so you're just moving people through that journey and this is all about the fact and I'm pretty sure you know this about yourself but most of us we don't buy the first time that we hear about a particular product or service it takes most of us seven or eight touch points to buy if somebody tries to sell it sell us the minute that we come across them or their brand or their business it can actually make us feel almost kind of like quite sick quite upset quite kind of angry um, so we have to to take people through that journey and we can do that through our social media content. So I'm going to show you an example of how we move our customers through that three-stage process for my media diary. So if you don't know about my media diary, it's an A4 desk diary that you can use to plan out your content for the coming year. It's got key dates, it's got awareness days, it's got planning tools inside it. It's a really popular product during the autumn season and also the first quarter of the year. So what we generally do with the Media Diary, we don't just go out and uh, start putting out uh, purchase content and asking people to buy it. We take people through that customer journey. So the very first thing I start to do is I start to create awareness content around it and this is usually very generic it's not specifically about my diary it's just about the problems that my diary solves so the problems that my diary solve are it helps people who are struggling to put together a content plan and it also helps people who are struggling to think of ideas for their content so I'll start by creating some very general content so how to create a content calendar a six-step process for example how to create a media calendar so very generic uh, it's not specifically about my diary although I might mention my diaries I'm just kind of warming people up and make, making people aware that I can help them with their content planning but I'm not trying to sell anything at this stage then we move on to the consideration stage so this is when I move into the phase and this is probably my favorite type of content to create when you're answering people's questions so so when people uh, find out about the diary they're often very interested in the diary but they've got lots of questions about it and one of the key questions they ask is can I see inside it so this is a piece of consideration content I created to address that. So I've just launched the LinkedIn version of the Media Diary Owners Club. So I just wanted to give you a little bit of a tour so you can get a sense of what you'll get if you decide to join the community. So first off, you'll get one of my 2019 Media Diaries. It's an A4 desk diary that you can use to plan out your content for the coming year. So it's full of awareness days and key dates that you can use to plan out your content. So this is March, for example. In March, you've got things like uh, you've got International Day of Happiness, you've got Brain Awareness Week, you've got things like International Women's Day, National Poetry Day. So tons of ideas that you can use to spark content for your LinkedIn, basically. Um, then we've also got a section where you can put your notes, so your content planners and notes. But actually, the thing that most people find most helpful about the diary is the planner section. So it's actually really a, a toolkit that you can use to do your, your yearly plan. So you start off with your yearly plan. I'll just come a bit closer. So hopefully that gives you the idea, but this is directly addressing a question that I get asked a lot about the diary. In fact, if somebody sends us a message on, on social media asking if they can see inside the diary, we do have inside pics, but sometimes people 
miss them, we will just send them a link to this video and they will often buy it directly as a result of seeing this video. So, so people are, you know, they're on the fence, they're not sure, they're thinking they might like to buy the diary, but they're a bit unsure, they're, they're not sure whether to invest their money on it, and then creating this content answers their questions. Now, for some people, when they see inside it, they might decide they don't want to buy it, so they might decide it isn't right for them. For me, I'm absolutely fine with that, because I'd much rather have people who love their diary and are using it and telling the world about it than people who buy it and, and then get disappointed and find out it's not what they need. So, consideration content actually involves being really kind of quite open and transparent and actually risking the fact that some people might hear what you've got to say and decide they don't want to buy but that's absolutely fine because all you need to worry about is getting people who are absolutely excited about your product and service and they really want to buy and want to tell the world about it. Here's another example of some consideration content that I created for my diary. So editorial calendar, yes you do, do need one so this is a, a post about how to create an editorial calendar and then it says and the 2019 media diary will make it easy so although I'm talking quite generically about creating a diary I am showing how sorry about how to create an editorial calendar I am actually talking about my diary and using examples from my diary so that makes it different from awareness content when I might just be talking very generally about creating an editorial calendar here I'm actually talking about using my diary to create one so it's, it's kind of this is designed more for people who again are thinking about the diary um, actually it could even work for people who already bought the diary and just need some guidance on how to use it because remember for those people who are you know fans of the diary who are getting good results from it they're going to tell other people about it as well so it can work on a few levels so that's my consideration content and then my purchase content so generally when the diary goes on sale I normally do a Facebook live so a live Q&A where I will unveil the diary and I'll invite people to ask me questions about it we promote it well in advance but there is no question about what that Facebook live is about I'm there to sell the diary I'll be giving the link throughout that Facebook Live. I'm not going to try and dress that up and pretend it's anything else I am selling on that Facebook Live. So it's quite different from that very kind of generic uh, awareness content that I created at the beginning of the cycle. So as I'm recording this, we are just going into the sales cycle for my 2020 media diary. And we're just starting with the awareness content now. So here's an example of a piece of awareness content that I posted on LinkedIn recently where I was asking people to vote on different cover ideas that we had. You can see this attracted 128 comments on LinkedIn, had several messages from people asking me if I have a link for them to buy it already. Um, so what you're doing is you're raising awareness, you're getting people excited. What you want to do is just gently take people through that journey so that when when they can buy, they're already excited about it. And it literally is a just case of just give me a link and I want to buy. And just taking people through this process and not trying to rush it can be really, really key. So in this particular post, I had a number of the inquiries and people who asked me if there was a page where they could buy. Um, I have a waitlist link that I gave to some people so they could get on the waitlist. So it's about getting people excited about buying your product before it even goes on sale and this also applies, of course, to a service as well. So here's just a reminder. This is the journey that you're taking people through. Awareness content. You're generally raising awareness about your product or service, the, the problems that you solve, and you're, you know, you're not trying to flog anything or send anything. Then consideration. This is content when you are specifically ask, answering questions that your customers or clients might have and things that might actually be holding them back from buying from you. And then the purchase content um, is when you are directly asking people to buy from you. So a key question I get asked a lot about this is how much of each type of content should I create? Well I'm just going to pop back to this slide again. This probably tells you everything you need to know. So the most content should be generic awareness content when you're you're answering people's questions, you're solving their problems um, and you're just genuinely, generally I should say being a very helpful resource. Um, then still quite a bit of consideration content because if you're anything like me your customers and clients will have lots of questions and lots of objections things that are possibly holding them back and if you can address those in your content you're going to make more sales the least actually is that purchase content I wouldn't put a figure on it I wouldn't say you know you definitely need to create you know 60% of awareness content and 30% consideration content and, and purchase purchase content is 10% or anything like that. It has to work for you and your business. You need to test it out and see what works for you. Uh, but generally, 
I would say the majority of my content is awareness content, then consideration, and actually purchase content when I'm directly asking people to buy is probably only 10, 20% of what I actually do, although I am selling all the time, and I'll talk to you more about that as we go. So up to you to test it out and see how much you need to do of each. Most people don't do enough consideration and purchase content, I will tell you that, because most people are too scared to sell. Uh, so up your amount of your consideration content and your purchase content, and you should immediately see, see more sales in your business. Okay, so I want to give you another example because we've talked about products so far. So I want to give you a more of a service-based example. So this is my live event that I run every year. So it's my annual content planning masterclass. And this year it's called 2020 Sorted. It's happening in Northampton, uh, November the 14th and 15th, if you're watching this, uh, when there's still time for you to book. So this is the process that we move people through in order to buy a ticket for one of my events. So again, we're creating awareness content. So this is a good example of it. This is um, a piece of content that I created for social media, which was about how to get sponsors for your event, blog, or podcast. Now, you might think, why the hell would I be creating content like that? Um, but I just secured some big sponsors for my live event and I thought and I asked myself a question I ask myself all the time when I'm creating content how can I make this about my audience so how can I make the fact that I've just landed some some really good sponsors for my event about my audience make it helpful for them so I thought well lots of my clients ask me like how do you get a sponsor for your event for your blog or your podcast I could share the process that I went through in order to make this happen and in doing so I'm raising awareness of the fact that I run events and people are going to know that I run events so it's a good example of awareness content so I'm just going to hit play um, and just show you so I've just secured four really fab sponsors for my upcoming event Build Your Audience Live so what I wanted to do was to share my tips with you on how you can get sponsorship for your events and activities so number one the first thing that I do when I'm looking for sponsorship is I sit down and I make a list of all the tools and the resources and the services that I'm using and the ones that I genuinely love because I know that if I can go to an organisation or a company and say I'm using your service and your product and I absolutely love it then it's just going to be a much better fit for both of us. Okay, so that should give you an idea of that awareness content. So it's about thinking, how can I make this about my audience? How can I make this thing helpful? This thing which is about me helpful to my audience, but at the same time, raise awareness of the fact that I run events. So that worked really well. Other types of awareness content I'm, I'm creating all the time. So at my last event, um, I published a post here, which was um, you know, a review of, of what had happened at the event and some of my favorite photos. I tag lots of people in. And you can see there in my PS tickets for my next event have just gone on sale for VIP waitlist folk DM me to find out about our flash sale so giving a clear call to action telling people what they what they um, should do if they want to get in touch with me but it's not the focal point of my content it's just raising awareness every time I post any photos or any video of any event that I'm running it's raising awareness for the next one so do bear that in mind here's another piece of awareness content this did really well for me I think I've mentioned this in early sessions um, but during the the planning phase of my last live event um, found myself up late like one night proofing the workbook for the event and so this particular post um, is actually raising awareness for the next event because at this stage we were pretty much sold out um, so anybody who was interested in, in coming along um, would have to book on to the next one so anytime that you're talking about anything that you sell in your business if you're having a conversation about anything you do or anything you sell it is raising awareness so just take off every opportunity you can uh, to start conversations about your products or services because that is a content. So here's an example of the next phase, consideration content. Here's something that I posted in my in my uh, Facebook group. This is actually in my membership group because they are my ideal clients to come along to this event. And I was, you know, quite genuinely looking at the scheduling for my live event and I had a question about it. I had a question about how how I should put that schedule together and I thought who better than to ask but the people who are either coming already or should be buying tickets so I asked them to give me some quite specific feedback about how I put the program together you can see this had 39 comments so while you know I'm not asking anybody to buy here you can see I just added a little ps in there a link to the event um, but I'm getting a conversation going about the event and people are thinking about my event so anybody who's already heard about it 
and is thinking about buying a ticket, this is going to help them with their decision. So it's an example of consideration content. So it's for people who already know about it. All of these people already knew about it, um, but possibly haven't yet booked their ticket. Um, and here's an example of purchase content. So this is a post that I put in the group on the day that the tickets went on sale. Um, I talked about the fact that, you know, sometimes we, we have great offers on our tickets and, and often people miss them and then afterwards they, they come back and say, oh, like, why didn't you tell me about this? So this is really kind of like, look, I just want you to buy a ticket. I'm not going to mess around here. I'm not adding anything in the PSs. I'm not kind of, you know, trying to play it low key at all. I am selling to you here. I want you to buy a ticket for the event. So you can see the difference in the different types of content. Now, I wish I could tell you, you know, exactly how to put together a an awareness piece of content, exactly how to put together a consideration piece of content, exactly how to put together a purchase piece of content. But as you can see, just from the examples I've shown you already, there's endless different ways that you can do this. But as long as you're bearing in mind that you're just taking people on a journey, the first stage, just raising awareness, you're not trying to sell to people, you're just making them aware of the problems that you solve, possibly about the products and services that you create, but mainly about the way that you help people. The next phase is specifically answering questions and getting conversations going about your product and service and the next day's purchase is when you're asking people to buy you're really directly asking people to buy so one little bit of advice i would give you at this stage is to start looking out for examples of these three types of content from the people that you buy from now i'm aware that i've probably given more examples in this session so far of product-based businesses and actually people often say it's the other way around so what I want to do now is just give you a few more examples um, that are more based around service-based business businesses but I also want you to just start looking out in your Facebook feed start looking out in your Instagram feed start saying to yourself oh look that's an example of consideration content oh look that's awareness content okay that's a really good example of purchase content and start taking screenshots if you see somebody doing it really well and you see somebody doing it where they're getting lots of engagement then just take a screenshot and then maybe you can try and emulate a post like that yourself okay so here's a great example of awareness content that I spotted in my Facebook feed So if you haven't guessed already, this is the fitness expert, Joe Wicks. Um, in this video, all he's doing is just showing you different ways to do burpees. He's not trying to sell you anything. He's just adding value. He's just being a helpful person, but he's also sh showing you and he's raising awareness of the problems that he solves, it solves for his customers and clients. So that's an example that I spotted in my own Facebook feed. Here's another example. This is Gary V, who's a, a sort of digital marketing expert and authority. I shared this particular video that I spotted that was on his Facebook page with my members. I've shared it all over the place, actually. I'm just going to show you a little clip of it, um, and then I'll talk about how Gary's using that in, in his journey. I think journey. the reason so many scum buckets are making so much money is because you're buying stupid fuck. And I forgot to say, if you're offended by bad language, uh, then um, then uh, please, please skip over this little bit. I'll just pop back and play that to you again. I think the reason so many scum buckets are making so much money is because you're buying stupid fucking courses over and over, thinking there's some fucking magic formula for passive income. I have a question about passive income. I don't want to be stuck in office nine to five for the rest of my... Well, passive income comes in two forms. 97% of the form is the douchiest, shittiest thing on earth, and 3% is the tried and true thing that has actually created passive income in the history of mankind. So when you... Okay, so if you're easily offended by bad language, you may not want to watch this video, but we put, we'll put a, a link in for you to go and have a look if, if you want. But this is raising awareness of, excuse me, <clears throat> this is raising awareness of Gary. Um, he's very, very Marmite. If you, if you don't like that kind of style of, of, um, of speaking, if you don't like his approach, then you go and get your digital marketing expertise from somewhere else. But he does talk a lot of sense. And in this, he's not trying to sell anything he's just giving actually some really good advice about if you're building an online business you know stop buying into this idea of passive income he's actually talking a lot of sense and he's not trying to sell anything at all so he's just raising awareness of the kind of person he is what kind of brand he's got 
what he helps people with, but he's not trying to sell anything here at all. And um, this is another example that popped up in my own Facebook, so I must have liked this page at some stage, Becky Barnes style, but this is a stylist who is just starting a conversation and she, she's got dressed in an outfit where she's put two different cardigans on and she's asking people, she's saying which one she thinks is better, but she's asking people to give their thoughts. And you can see here that she started a conversation which has attracted 43 comments. So this lady's name is kind of etched in my memory as somebody that does, does is a stylist and does styling because I've seen her content. Now she's not selling anything here, she's not saying here's how to sign up for a session with me, she's raising awareness because she's just starting an interesting conversation. I found myself actually looking at this for quite some time, trying to decide what I thought and whether I agreed with her. So it's a really clever way to raise awareness, to get people on your page or on your feed, wherever you're posting this kind of content and get conversations going. And they will, will remember who you are and what you do. Really, really clever way to do it. Okay, some examples of consideration content. So this is Dan Knowlton. And although I've been creating these three types of content for years without really even knowing it, it was Dan that I first heard these three phrases from. So uh, awareness content, consideration content and purchase content. I've been doing it, but I hadn't labelled it as such. Um, so this is a video that Dan's created on what it's like to work with his company. So it's an absolutely classic example of consideration content um, and gives you an idea of what it might be like to work with them. Um, this is an example of consideration content. So I was getting asked all the time on LinkedIn, should you buy my LinkedIn content strategy playbook? Well, they weren't, they weren't saying, should you? They should, should, say, should I buy it or should I buy your online masterclass? So I thought, you know what, instead of keep answering this, I'm just going to create um, a post about it and then obviously in posting it uh, people will become more aware of the fact that I do have these resources to help. Um, here's another example actually so this is a gym that Dan Knowlton works with in Maidstone. I'm just going to show you the beginning of it but it's a video that gives you a sense of what it might like to be like to be a member of this particular gym. <laughs> So the reason I really like this as a piece of consideration content is that it, it helps you with that question that you might be having, okay, this gym sounds good, maybe the price sounds right, maybe the location's right, maybe the hours are right, but can I see myself in that gym? Can I see myself working out in that gym? Do those people in the gym look like the kind of person that I I, I might just want to spend time with? We create this kind of content for my events, actually, because when I'm selling my events, I'm very aware of the fact that it isn't just all about the ticket price, it isn't just all about the location, it isn't just all about the, the, the day. I know that people want to feel comfortable in that room they want to feel it's the right place for them so by sharing pictures by sharing video it can help people decide whether they can see themselves in that room or maybe not as the case may be and I think this gym does this really well now you might be watching this at this stage and thinking I don't have the budget um, to create these kind of videos you don't need it you could literally just take your iPhone and just give a little bit of a tour of your gym you could do that on Instagram stories even just share some pictures it's, it's not about having professionally produced content it's about the message and just about helping people to make a decision and now moving on to purchase content so that gym there there's an example of one of their pieces of purchase content are you are you investing enough in your health and well-being sign up now to take the first step to a happier healthier life so this is actually from a facebook ad i suspect it's probably a retargeting ad that has that is actually shown to people who've watched that video um so again making no bones about it do you want to buy it or not? That's your purchase content. This is a really good example of purchase content from Joe Wicks. Um, like many people who are doing really good work online, the majority of the content that Joe Wicks shares is helpful uh, or entertaining content, um, really kind of engaging content that's not trying to say you anything, but there are some posts that pop up, there, are, there is some purchase content. So this example is really compelling because it's congratulating somebody who's done really well on his body coach program and you can see the results there, like the results speak for themselves. So it's a really fantastic um, example of purchase content and it's got 
it's basically got a clear call to action telling you what to do. And your purchase content should be like that. There should only ever be one clear call to action, which is telling people where they need to go to buy. So a question I get asked a lot when it comes to social selling is, should you put a link to buy in every single post? I would say definitely not. I think that people need to trust you, that they need to know, like and trust you. And if right from the off, every post they see from you has a link to buy something, they will soon just sort of switch off from the messages. So I tend to mix it up a little bit. So if I am talking about one of my products or services, and I think people are going to ask me, or indeed if they do start asking me, I'll add a little PS saying, here's a link. Or I might say, DM me if you want the link. So if you're actually actively asking people to DM you, you're not shoving it down their throat. You're saying, if you are interested, send me a DM. And then, you know, you, you can kind of sense check that you're not being sort of pushy or selly. Actually, what you want to do is kind of create the kind of content that makes people want to come to you because they are just so impressed in hearing you talk about uh, what you've been up to in the conversations that you're starting like you know that's what you're trying to do through this content is you're not trying to be pushy or silly you're actually just trying to be uh, showing up being a really helpful person sharing valuable advice and guidance helping people to solve their problems not asking for any money for it and just placing yourself as the go-to person in your industry or the go-to person in your product space so that when people do have a need they will think of you straight away and that's a Another really key point to take away is that you can't convince anybody to buy anything from you. They have to feel that they have the problem that you solve from them and they have to be ready to buy. So in putting this content out, I mean, I've just had somebody join my membership who has been on my list since 2017. It's taken that person that long to be in the right place to sign up for my membership program that's absolutely fine and all the time I've been out there showing up creating lots of awareness content lots of consideration content and a little bit of purchase content and they've still come forward so you can't make anybody buy you know just putting out more and more sale posts is not going to make people buy from you but building up that relationship and building up a relationship over time and being patient and not trying to ram your products and services down people's throats that's what's going to work that's going to get you in that situation uh, where people are going to come to you uh, because they want to work with you or they want to buy your products okay so a little bit on generating ideas for social selling i've put together a resource for you which i think you're going to find really useful to go with this session 29 post ideas to help you sell on social media so it's literally there done for you 29 ideas for posts that you can create but i do suggest that you also complement this with taking your own screenshots and seeing what other people are doing once you start looking for it you will just see examples everywhere and your brain will probably be firing up uh, because you'll see so many examples. I've also put this um, along with this session so that if you just want to jot down some of your ideas I would suggest that for any launch that you're doing for a new product or service that you sit down and just make a list of, of your different ideas that you've got for your awareness consideration and purchase content as I say I don't think that it's necessary to put an exact percentage on it um, but just make sure that you're doing you're doing some of each and you know probably doing more awareness content and more consideration content than purchase content but do test it out on your audience and just bear in mind most people are not doing enough consideration or purchase content they're doing loads of awareness content content but they're too scared to sell so they're not doing the other two bits that actually help people move over the line and become a customer Uh, so that's really really important that you do do all three types of content i've also included with this session my sell everyday checklist so this is just a reminder of the kind of things that you can be doing every single day um, to, to to make sure that you're always selling that you're always selling your products and services every single day there's lots of ideas for you there another question i get asked a lot about this is do you need to take your customers through so does your content have to kind of follow that cycle so you know Monday to Wednesday you're putting out awareness content and uh, Thursday and Friday you're putting out uh, consideration content and Saturday and Sunday you're doing purchase content well no of course not because people will be following you on social media and you'll be picking them up at different stages in their journey so you just need to always be doing a bit of a mixture of awareness consideration and purchase content so that people can meet you where they are in their journey their particular journey So lastly, I just want to talk about why people buy, because this is really, really important. I've touched on it already, but I want you to really think about this when you're putting your social media posts together. So I'm not going to tell you this, I'm actually going to explain this to you by telling a story. So this is me um, and one of my clients, Nadia Newton, who has a fantastic brand called Penelope Hope. Um, She has beautiful homeware and gifts. And this is me at at Nadia, 
Natalie Nardia studio uh, just a few weeks back when I was on my holiday in Guernsey. She's based over in Guernsey and there I am in her studio. I went with my daughter to make um, a notice board and while I was there I spent a couple of hundred pounds on some of Nardia's uh, products. Now that didn't happen straight away. I've known her for a good year or so now. She's been a client for I think for a, a good year or so and that relationship has built over time and um, one of the things that I specifically went to her studio to pick up was a beach bag so she's making these beautiful beach bags in this kind of um red sort of um almost kind of like jungle uh jungle print and and I already have the makeup I have I have two makeup bags in that particular print and I saw that she was creating these beach bags and I thought well I'm going to I'll go and actually get one from her because I'll be able to save the 20% that and then I won't have to pay the postage as well I'll just go in and see her and I'll collect one now these bags are not cheap I think they're 95 pounds and while I was in there I picked up a few other bits and pieces and I want to show you the journey that Nadia took me on she probably didn't even consciously know she was taking me on that journey in order to go to that studio and buy the the beach bag okay so the first thing that I saw was a picture of Nadia on her Facebook page I think it was um, holding this beach bag saying they're going on pre-order tomorrow um, so I'm going to be showing the the finalized design after listening to all your helpful comments I later found out that she posted on Instagram telling people she was thinking about creating these beach bags with her 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 fabric on um, but this was the first that I saw about it we'll be making them in the studio on a strictly first come first serve made to order basis so that's the first I saw of it then I saw uh, that she she posted this where she was talking about how many pre-orders she had and I thought oh these are really popular and at this stage and I've missed out a little bit of the story uh, my designer Tracy had told me that she wanted these one of these beach packs as well and it was her birthday coming up and you know she works really hard to support me and I wanted to buy her something nice so I thought well maybe I'll pre-order a beach bag for for um for Tracy um so and I thought I better get in quick because it sounds like these are going like hotcakes and I'm going to miss out if I don't so I actually messaged Nadia after seeing this post and said can I order one of your beach bags and I did that on Instagram then I saw this picture so Nadia was going off to Ibiza uh, for the week I think with, with some of her friends on a girls trip and I saw a picture of her friend at the airport with her beach bag and that was you know getting me more excited about about um Tracy getting hers and thinking oh do you know what I think I'd like one of these for myself then I saw another picture of Nadia with hers on her trip and then later I think she posted a picture of herself with Craig David um she met him and I think she had a beach bag in that one as well and there were various other posts on Instagram and I got to the point where I'd seen it so much I just really wanted it I just really liked it and I was thinking to myself well, you know that's a lot of money for a beach bag and but then I was sort of rationalizing to myself and thinking well you know a beach bag isn't the kind of thing that you buy every year the last one I had I've had for about 10 years so if I do buy it I'll probably have it for a long time it's really nice or oh, why don't I just treat myself and I had to talk myself into buying this beach bag but I did end up going to Nadia's studio to buy it and this is the most recent post that I've seen about these beach bags and that's how I ended up there picking up this beach bag and ended up buying a lampshade and loads of other stuff and I'd already bought one for Tracy. Now I share that with you because I think it's really important to remember that whether you're selling a product or service people don't buy logically they buy emotionally. I do not need an ideas beach bag it's you know I don't need it to survive at all I just wanted it and because I wanted it, I was able to justify that sale to myself. She didn't push it on me. She didn't ask me to buy it. But I kept seeing it. I kept seeing her talk about it. I kept seeing her getting conversations with people about it. I made that. I, I justified that sale to myself. And I share this because often I think when we're thinking about selling, and in particularly particular social selling, we forget that. We forget there's nothing we can do or say or post to convince people to buy our products and services. They have to make that sale to themselves. They have to justify that purchase to themselves. And when they're ready, they will come forward. It's the same if you sell online programs or memberships it's the same if you sell books it's the same if you sell events whatever it is that you sell the person who's buying from you has to make that sale to themselves first they have to justify that purchase so if you're diligently like Nadia was showing up talking about the beach bag talking about it in different ways like creating a bit of FOMO saying that actually you know they were only creating a number and you know the, the order numbers were limited um talking about the fact that 
and showing her, showing her off with her friends, showing her friend with one, if she hadn't kept almost kind of like, you know, Gary Vaynerchuk, the digital marketing expert I mentioned earlier, talks about it kind of like jab, 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 right hook. But Nadia was jabbing me, like she was jab, 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 jab with that that beach bag and actually she didn't even need to give me a right hook because I came forward and bought it myself I just want you to think about the times that you've done that with any product or service you know maybe you were thinking about working with me for a while and you kept seeing my emails you kept seeing my posts you kept seeing my LinkedIn you read some of my consideration content and then you saw that post or then you got that email and it was the one that made you think you know what I'm going to do it it's about time I invested in myself it's about time I invested in my learning I'm going to invest in Janet's program you made that sale to yourself I didn't have to force you to do it I didn't have to I didn't have to make you do it you stepped forward and did that but you probably did that because you've been listening to my podcast or you've been reading my blog post or you've been following me on social media or somebody else recommended me but it's very likely that you're not watching this now because you saw one Facebook post or you saw one Instagram post I've built a relationship with you over time so I really really want you to have a think about that when it comes to social selling and I really want you to just slow down and just think how can you take your customers through that journey so how can you take them through that awareness phase when you're just raising awareness of the problems that you solve with people when you're just answering their questions and you know taking them seriously like you know it it's a big decision to spend money with somebody, whether it's nine ninety nine for a playbook or whether it's like nine hundred pounds for a coaching program. It's a big decision, so be patient. Answer people's questions. Be helpful. Help them make that decision. Help some people make the decision not to buy from you, not to work from you, because I I can guarantee it will be much better in the long run if you don't attract customers that are not the right fit for you. So if you want any other ideas, don't forget that I've also got this resource, 23 Ideas for Engaging Social Media Posts. We'll link to that below as well. But I think the main resource that you can take from this episode is the 29 Ideas for Social Selling. So this is what we've covered. We've looked at understanding your customer journey. We've looked at the three types of content you should be creating to attract your ideal clients and understanding why people buy and why that is just so, so important. As ever, get in the Facebook group, ask many questions that you've got about this module, share ideas. Uh, if it's going well, share that with us. If it's not going well, if you've posted something and you can't work out why it's not working, then let me know. One last thing I wanted to add is that this principle of these three types of content is actually the principle I'm going to be teaching later on when we start to talk about blog content, podcast content and um, YouTube, that, that, that kind of content. Um, so don't worry at this stage if you don't have a YouTube channel or you don't have a podcast or a blog or anything like that. Just try and create this content on social media, test it out, see what works, see what gets you sales and you can take it from there.